Let's Get Down to Business is presented by Bravo, the marketing arm of Ash Brokerage Corporation, the practice enhancement company. This week, it's our series on the transformation of advisors into CFOs. And on today's show, financial wellness through risk management. And with me today, accredited investment fiduciary and CPA, Levi McMillan. Hi, everyone. I'm Steve Savant, syndicated financial columnist and contributing author to Backroom Technician. Let's get down to business. Well, welcome to the show, Levi. Hi, great to be here. Transformation of advisors into CFO. I mean, I love your company's name, CFO for life, right? Yes. For life. That's right. I mean, you're not going to retire. <laughs> These are going to be your clients forever. Legacy firm is what well, we It's built. a legacy firm. Boy, yes, I'll tell you what, I hope I hope they are able to take care of us when we get older. We're sitting there geriatric being <laughs> advisors at 85. I can't wait to see that. Octagarian advisors. Oh, that'd be something. Well, listen, when we're talking about being a CFO, people don't really look at it that way. I mean, advisors say I advise and they have niche, they have a general practice, but they have right. a niche issue. But you've taken this to a whole nother level. Now you're a CPA. That's correct. You have, you have a degree, your degrees are in business, so you actually didn't come into this business from another place. You actually lived here all this time. I mean, you're in our environment. When I look at that, I'm looking at all these areas for financial wellness that you look at and you say, if you're willing to look at this as an advisor, you could become the CFO or his quarterback of his financial concerns. And you believe this. Absolutely. We, uh, you, you, when you look at a high net worth individual, typically they have an attorney, they have a banker, they have a CPA, they have a financial uh, advisor and an insurance agent. And even if you have the best in the country, there's no one truly quarterbacking all those disciplines. Mm -hmm. So just like a company has a CFO handling all those affairs, that's what we've built. And we feel like the two most trusted advisors are the CPA and the certified financial planner. And so we've assembled a team to provide that for the customer so that we can truly be that quarterback. Do you see when people don't have a central area or a central quarterback or a mm -hmm. CFO that people aren't talking, these other advisors are not talking to each other and it becomes uncoordinated? That's true, and, and really the worst part of that is that falls back on the customer. And so now the customer has to quarterback and understand that's tax strategy, the estate strategy, mm -hmm. the investment strategy, and for you know 90% of people don't have that skill set. And for the 10 that do, that's not what they wanna do. They wanna have a personal CFO quarterbacking and handling all that so that they can do what they want with their so life. So you're gonna cherry pick your own team on this Right. I mean, you're going to pick the guys that you want to be on your team right. as the head, the CFO of your client's concerns. Well, let's talk about this first one, risk management. I mean, th you know, I keep thinking every time I think of risk management, most of my clients that write and talk to us online are always saying, oh, yeah, my property casualty guy. That's right. I mean, they, they default right there. I mean, that's the first thought. Talk Absolutely. a little bit about why is risk management such an important part of a CFO's life? Well, risk management is uh, just another facet of whether you want to talk about an asset class or a different component on protecting the family's wealth or whatever it may be that they're trying to accomplish. So, for example, property and casualty is a component of that, but also life, disability, long-term care. All those pieces of the puzzle fit together to make sure that you're bulletproof in, in going forward. And so we, we address all those areas of risk management. When you review the risk exposure, and you would let's say you it does let's say it does default to some property casualty you would then choose some agent if your client doesn't have anybody he's working with you would choose some agent and he would have him review everything his clients into absolutely but he, would he report back to you then as the cfo that's correct that's I say, the, so that's a different that's a hub and spoke issue here that's different that's right so we've aligned we have strategic partners the best independent agencies across the country and so we'll sit down with our our customer and we will review their home, auto, umbrella, every insurance policy they have, take that to our expert of teams, come back, they'll go to the whole market and then relay an audit report looking at all the areas of where they could either save money, they're under or over insured and report directly that and facilitate the whole process. When you're doing what I call the cornerstone of financial planning which is risk management mm -hmm. and you do it at the level that you just described, how much of the time do you see consumers either underinsured and or paying too much? Well, there's always an issue in every policy that we look so at. So there's a deficiency somewhere? It, somewhere. Okay. Well, when I think about that, that, that to me, because we're starting out at the cornerstone, when you look at risk management, a lot of people think of that as just house, auto, you know, that's pretty much mm -hmm. home auto and a little bit of life if they throw right. it in. You look at this as way broader than that. 
Absolutely. Talk, uh, from a CFO's point of view, how do you look at it? So we look at, at their situation in life and we make sure that whenever you look at risk management, if you were going to break it down, you'd break it down into what you mentioned, the, the property and casualty, then life, disability, and long-term care. So depending on what age, where, it, where they're at in their lives, we'll examine all the policies they have and then point out other areas of risk management that might be important to them so that they're not drawing down on their assets and that we've protected their assets based on their overall goals and objectives. In your experience as a risk manager, I have this for my protection because somebody brought it to me. If somebody didn't bring me the concept of an umbrella policy, right. that would have never crossed my grid. I have to be honest with you, mm -hmm. I had fully insured on my home, my auto, some of my recreational issues, but somebody said, oh, but Steve, you have kids that are teenagers, mm -hmm. they're driving. Right. You need to have an umbrella policy. And I have to say, and this was about a decade ago, I said, what's that? Right. I didn't know about that. Talk a little bit about that because I think we are we have huge exposure and this is one of those areas, especially if you have teenage drivers. Oh, it's, it's a huge ex exposure. And you know, I have four children myself. So uh, when you have children that are driving and you know, you give them the keys and now they go out there, uh, it's all gonna fall back on you. And now all your assets are at risk if you don't have an appropriate umbrella policy to protect uh, your assets. And so with the litigious environment that we're in now, it's very important that, that you have all those bases covered. Well, when I'm looking at your risk management, I've noticed that you threw something in here that was kind of strange because I would have thought this was more in estate planning. You kind of threw estate planning here as risk management. When we come back from the break, I want to talk to you. Hey, well, what do you mean by that? Because I would have thought that would have been someplace else. Sure. Yeah. Because to me, this is a whole new concept of the way you're doing this, this CFO for life. What a great concept. We come back from the break, we're going to keep addressing risk management as part of our overall financial wellness strategy that can position you as the CFO for your client and a marketing tactic for prospecting for new clients in your community. Don't forget, you can also request a risk management examples from backroom technician at downtobusiness.ashbrokerage.com or you can go right out there yourself and get a 30-day free trial offer at brtnow.com forward slash trial sign up dot ASPX. We'll be right back with more from Levi right after the break. Back in the day, life insurance professionals were called field underwriters. Then, carriers trained their field force in the basics of life insurance underwriting. Today, the insurance industry doesn't educate the agent population as they once did. But now, you can have the informed risk guide at your fingertips so you can illustrate a reasonable rate class for your life insurance prospects. Just request your copy of the informed risk guide at downtobusiness.ashbrokerage.com. It's free from Ash Brokerage, the practice enhancement company. Well, welcome back. I'm Steve Savant with Levi McMillan. And remember, you can watch all our episodes of Let's Get Down to Business, including my weekly consumer show, Steve Savant's Money, the name of the game, right on at ashbrokerage.com. And just click on the show logo right on the homepage. It'll take you right out there. And just a heads up, before moving forward with any of the ideas you hear on our show, always consult your tax advisor, although I have one, and your legal counsel, as well as your broker-dealer compliance officer. Well, let's get down to business. We're addressing risk management. Levi's into his whole CFO for life, which I love the concept. I think advisors need to go there. I think that's the new wave. Mm -hmm. But now I noticed in risk management that you parked asset protection strategies of estate planning under risk management. Now I would have thought that would have been you know retirement management, estate planning. You kind of parked it over here. Talk to right. me a little bit about that. That's an anomaly to me. Well, so let, let's say we spend a, a ton of time with our clients gathering assets, building up net worth so they can ultimately retire with dignity. Well, the estate part of the equation is a huge risk management because you can build up a large estate and if you don't use the right planning techniques to protect that estate, mm -hmm half of it can go to the government. So um, we use tools and risk management to understand what are your objectives uh, when that time comes. Do you want to have a significant amount of wealth to pass on to charity or to your family? Or are you okay with Uncle Sam getting half of it? So depending on where they fall, we can leverage uh, different avenues to protect that estate and mm -hmm. again we feel like that's just another piece of the puzzle that fits into risk management. So if I can extrapolate, the tax liability is a risk management issue. Huge. Okay, so if my have and, and you said I don't want to give up half of my right. <laughs> okay, let's just let's just assume yes. we don't want to give half to the government. So if I'm doing defensive 
And this sounds like defensive planning to me. You know, if I'm thinking in football terms, right. we're doing defense right now. And I've heard, according to the Super Bowl winners, year after year, I've heard the best offense is a good defense. Absolutely. So when you're talking about defending against any liability, and that could be a tax exposure, that could be property casualty exposure, you're just kind of putting this all under one roof. And you have, as the CFO, you have experts in these areas. If you don't, if that's not your, we all have general practice, right. but if that's not your area of expertise, you actually have a team that you assemble. Yes, we've we've assembled a team of uh, multiple CPAs, CFPs, a CFA, a state attorneys, insurance specialists uh, across the country. So that there's all these different areas. We call them solution teams. So as the personal CFO, being the quarterback to the client, we have the different solution teams that we bring in and we solve and and. Um, accomplish your goals and objectives. So if I had, for example, it, would you keep in-house estate planning or would you outsource that to one of your team solution members? Really the only two things that we don't own directly is a law firm or a bank. And so we've aligned ourselves with the, the best estate attorneys and bankers across the country mm -hmm. and we bring in and we quarterback it. We don't send the clients to the estate attorneys or to the bankers. They come to our office, we set in, we facilitate the meetings and, and they just handle uh, their component. Now, are you just in your Texas arena or no? You're national now. We're national. We have clients in 22 states. Uh, we have offices in Texas, Arkansas, um, Indiana, and we're looking at expanding into Florida and other parts of the country in 2014. So when you saw this in the big picture, how did you come to the revelation, by the way, of just CFO for life? Well, you know, I started my career as a CPA and um, as a fiduciary for our client, looked at this industry about 15 years ago and really saw a lot of, um, I guess, problems with it in that it was, you know, a product-driven business. And we really thought we could change the world by bringing together the fiduciary component of a CPA, the investment knowledge of a CFP, and really bringing that whole component together to be that personal CFO. And we really felt like that was the best solution for the client rather than them trying to shop and have multiple different professionals um, around you know, their area trying do, to solve. Do consumers like the single shingle mentality then? That's the question. Do they, they like it? They love it. They love it. So now you know, you've heard the one-stop shop, but truly we have every, we've built the best of breed mm -hmm. in the independent financial arena and they love it. So I, I like the ability for a client to come in and say, you're going to take care of any of the expertise you need to farm out or get. You already have those relationships. You'll take care of it. You have a solution team already to go. When we're talking about risk management, of course, we just touched on estate planning, which to me, again, is so mm -hmm. odd being in risk management, right. you know. But when tomorrow we're going to be talking about tax management. And this is the beginning of that when you're at the front end of the risk. I've gotten all this accumulated wealth and now I'm going to give half up to the government. Right. My job is to defeat that liability issue the best possible way with the best with the lowest amount of money. That's right. Now, when you when you look at this, I mean, you've been doing this, you've seen how our, our market has changed. Mm -hmm. The unified credit's awfully high. That's right. You still doing risk management in the states? Absolutely. And tell me why. Well, because even though that's high, the estates continue to grow in value and um, there's still a ton of different planning techniques that can go, plus the laws are constantly changing. So therefore, you've got to control the controllables and you've got to be proactive in your approach. Mm -hmm. When you do, when you're doing estate planning, if they're under that m amount of money and they would never good, do you see state taxes as becoming the next place to look at? Because everybody thinks, well, the unified credit for a married couple is over 10 million. Right. I'm not gonna hit that number in my lifetime. I don't have to do estate planning, but I'm in, an, I'm in a state that actually hasn't dittoed the federal law. Absolutely. So you think that's a, that's an important thing for people to look at. Sometimes it's state taxes on a transfer, not so much a state taxes at the federal level. That's exactly right, Steve. Well, tomorrow we're gonna to talk about all these things and those things are gonna be tax sanctuary issues that we're gonna talk about. And remember, you can read all my online insurance commentary, advisor blogs, and articles on Producers Web, as well as my answers to consumer questions on the insurance library. And remember, you can view any of our past episodes on our on-demand section located at downtobusiness.ashbrokerage.com. So follow me on Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, or just email me, steve.savant at ashbrokerage.com. And remember, you could be wiser as an Ash Brokerage advisor. I'm Steve Savant. We're fake bantering. 
Let's put the damn thing for the credits and then email. Right? Yeah. Yeah, how about those cowboys? And then you can play, right? Yeah. <laughs> hey, they uh, beat the record. There you go. Yeah. That was a great game. Yeah. Great game. But the Eagles. Oh, my gosh. I'm not going to get his